I was clicking on the wrong thing, which is why you saw a button for so long that said play. Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace be with you all on this day that the Lord has made. For those of you who may not know, I am Pastor Amanda, and I welcome you into our worship through Prescott Valley United Methodist Church. No matter where you have been and no matter where you are on your faith journey, I welcome you with an open mind an open heart and open arms <laughs> into this time where we encounter and respond to God in community. Welcome. I already love being able to see some of the good mornings on Facebook. Uh, some of us on Zoom were already able to have some good conversations. Uh, I just want to say this before I get into any of the technical things that Facebook is saying good morning to you, Zoom, and I'm sure the feeling is very mutual. Um, just uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to go through who's here exactly, but <laughs> they're saying good morning. Uh, and I'm very glad that we are able to join in this time together, uh, that even at a distance, we are able to come together as a family of faith. Um, before I lead us in a prayer and meditation, I'm going to begin with one logistic reminder and a few announcements. The logistic reminder is to help us be aware of what we offer into this time of live worship. Uh, we continue to have live worship with the intent of making room for us to engage with one another, saying good morning, uh, saying uh, or sharing our blessings with one another, sharing our hopes, our prayers, and our questions and our comments with one another. Uh, even those who aren't live with us are invited to engage engage through Facebook and YouTube at a later time. Uh, this is only possible if you do have accounts with those, unfortunately, but if you do have an account with YouTube or an account with Facebook, you are more than welcome to join us in engaging um, with us. I will make sure to respond. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we are all aware that because these services are not only live, but accessible through YouTube and Facebook, as long as the internet decides to run, uh, I want to continue inviting us to set an intention with one another. When offering a prayer, please avoid using sensitive information like last names and specific locations. You are welcome to use last initials. Um, you are welcome to also send me any specific information or send the information to our church office, uh, to our admin assistant, uh, Linda Charles. Uh, the information about accessing or contacting the church office is in the description, but also in the prelude video several times. I made that a point uh, to make sure that you knew how to reach us at Prescott Valley UMC. Um, I did want to clarify that I did tell uh, the Zoom folks that Zoom is a private platform. It is. So it doesn't really matter what we share. Everything that's recorded or shared through Zoom um, stays in Zoom. However, uh, because Zoom is being streamed onto the live platform uh, that is accessible throughout the internet, um, I'm going to invite us all to set this intention with one another. We have been very good about it. I just want to always make sure we set that as we open our worship together. That being said, I am going to move on to a few announcements. And by a few announcements, I believe that's a little bit misleading. However, I'm going to try to make sure I get through them as quickly as possible. As I had last week, I have an in-person suspension update for you all this morning. But also, as I did last week, I'm not going to go into specific details on this open platform. What I will tell you is that we have plans to open our building and we will be sharing the details of how to prepare ourselves for this move, this transition in the next or in the coming weeks. Uh, this past week I shared the first step of our plans and we'll be sharing 
how we can all prepare for this move through our own preparations and support of our community. Uh, if you are not receiving these updates, please, please, please let me know. If you're not receiving these updates and would like to receive these updates, please, please let me know. Again, our information is sprinkled throughout the Prelude video that will be accessible on Facebook and YouTube after. It is also in the chat section on Zoom and in the description section on Facebook. <laughs> it will continue to be advertised. So please just reach out to us if you aren't receiving any of these transition updates. Uh, there will be very important information for us in the future. Um, okay, the next announcement, I'm gonna just keep moving forward. The next announcement I has to, has to do with this coming week. Uh, I'm just going to uh, lay this out. We are gonna continue our ministry moment study and we are going to be having our fellowship and prayer um, offered this week as well. Uh, so Tuesday at 1030 is our study and Thursday at 1030 is the fellowship and prayer, which is very much an informal time. Uh, you just pop in on Zoom and we can chat with one another about life and everything. Um, you can even call in if you feel so inclined. Um, but I wanted to make sure to address that uh, before I move into some of the nitty gritty details about Holy Week, which is coming up. Uh, this, this means that we have made it through the season of Lent. Yay! Well, technically, this is the last Sunday <laughs> of Lent, uh, but we will be entering Holy Week uh, next week with Palm Sunday. I actually have a few things I want to mention in regard to this. And the first has to do with those of you who are in our local area or and are in our directory. As we have done for Advent and Easter last year, some Easter elves will be popping by sometime after Wednesday to share a bag full of goodies with you. Uh, this bag is a product of many minds and hands coming together in order to celebrate Holy Week and Easter with you. From our Easter elves who will come together to deliver the bags, to those who help pack them with some gifts prepared through our office and gifts generously donated by an anonymous member of our church family. I pray these bags offer opportunities for reflection. Uh, they offer some sweetness and ultimately I pray that they bring a smile to your face as they do to mine. Uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up to our local uh, family. Yes, it is. I apologize only for those who are in the area, uh, but I want you to know that we'll make sure that anything that can be shared uh, online or through mail will be um, shared. Uh, but I wanted to just give you a little heads up because I do know that the past couple of times we've offered some bags, there's been some shock. <laughs> oh, we're having this? This is happening? Uh, why is this outside my door? Um, everything else will be a surprise. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Now on to some scheduling um, for this coming week. If you have the video accessible, you will have seen this in the prelude, uh, but I'm sure many people are still popping in. Uh, so I want to address this. Um, this week, we have a few things happening, um, or for Holy Week, we have a few things happening. Um, there will be several opportunities for us to join together in a drive up communion. Um, they're only an hour each time, so you are welcome to pop in um, at any of these, uh, but I will be standing outside completely sanitized with uh, two masks and some gloves and a tray that has been sanitized with a communion cup and of juice and a wafer that has been sanitized and you will be invited to stay in your cars while I pray with you over this holy sacrament. Um, these times are offered on this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, this coming Sunday, so Palm Sunday, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., and then next Thursday, which is Maundy slash Holy Thursday, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Monday Thursday's communion offering will be a little different. They'll have a di I'll have a different prayer uh, available as well as a little sheet of paper to hand with uh, hand to you that I'm going to leave uh, to make sure that any viruses that can be formed will die upon that sheet of paper. And again, I'll be sanitized and ready to receive you during that time. Um, there will also be online services offered for Holy Thursday and Good. Friday. 
these services will be pre-prepared. So they're not going to be live like this where I can ramble on as I please. Uh, they will be uh, concise and they will be um, offered through our YouTube channel, which is Prescott Valley UMC, as well as I'm looking into uh, what times would be best to also stream that service onto Zoom for those who would like to join through Zoom. But more details will come in the update this week. I just wanted to give you a heads up to pay attention. There's a lot of things happening in the coming weeks and I, uh, I'll be sharing a lot of information, I am sure. <sighs> okay, I think that's all I have. <laughs> um, if that's not enough, um, please let me know. <laughs> If there's any other information that I've missed, uh, please just let me know and I will make sure to address it in the days to come. Okay. Let us now <laughs> join together and settle ourselves into our space with a breath and body prayer. Uh, we'll slow down from all of the information that we were just throne or that I just shared. Uh, so let us find a comfortable position in our spaces. Um, to have your hands on your side, on your lap, both feet on the ground, uh, with your eyes closed, however you feel most comfortable and grounded in your space this morning, I invite you to sit in this way. Okay, I already did this, but let us begin with a deep breath, as deep as we are able to take. Let's take one more breath, ready? Okay. Now I invite you to notice your body. How is your body feeling this morning? How is it carrying you into today? Is it aching? Is it rested? Is your body feeling antsy? Are you feeling sluggish? How is your body carrying you into this day? How is it affecting the way you enter into this time? Pay attention. Now notice your senses. Though not all of them are in use at this particular moment in time, what do you hear, taste, smell, touch, see? What are your senses telling you? what is helping you focus, and what is distracting you? What is helping you focus, and what is distracting you? Now take a moment to notice within yourself, how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? Are you anxious, relieved, upset, content? Are you feeling impatient? Are you calm? Are you overwhelmed or do you feel like you are in complete control? As you acknowledge your body, your surroundings and how you are feeling in your soul, take a breath. Do your best to focus on your breathing now. 
Is it hard to breathe? Is it easy? Breathe in this moment. Breathe out everything keeping you from being fully present. Breathe in this moment. And breathe out everything keeping you from being fully present. May these words be our prayer. Glorious God, we revel in your grace on this last Sunday in our Lenten season. What a journey we have and what a journey we will continue to have in your name. We often see you filtering in and out of our lives, but we long for your presence to be made a solid foundation within us. We pray for your presence to be made aware to us so that we may live a life worthy of this life you have given us. As we breathe, in our bodies, in our minds, and in our spirits, we pray this with the fullness of who we are. In the name of your Son, who continues to journey with us in word, in deed, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> <clears throat> We now come to the portion of our service for those who follow through our bulletin um, to our ministry moment. And I must say that I had a change of heart as I was continuing my preparations for this morning, um, this past week, which is actually quite spot on because we will be talking the matters of the heart today, even if it is just loosely. <clears throat> I wanted to zero in on a specific ministry in our local church family today. However, I was inspired by a message that was shared by our bishop to our conference and those who are just a part of the subscription list to receive his letters uh, this past week. For those of you who are on that list, well, you will know what I'm talking about. If you are not on his mailing list, he shared a letter in response to the rise of violence toward the Asian community. Uh, I felt his message was poignant and incredibly moving. I also became aware that this isn't the first message he has had to share this past year. And there are definitely more letters that I have received. There have been several letters of response that have been sent to address violence around our nation and around the world. It seems on a consistent basis. It seems that when we have just made it through one incident, another quickly arises to take its place. What I know from this is that there is a lot of trauma and a lot of important conversations and action steps that need to be taken in order for our world to move forward. I'm sorry, I'm going to take one quick drink. <clears throat> okay. While I find myself speechless in the wake of continued violence, I want to share some of the words that our bishop uh, shared that have given me strength and offered me comfort in the madness. Bishop Hoshibata, Bishop Bob Hoshibata wrote in his last letter, <clears throat> our Lenten journey calls us to enter into a time of self-examination, a time to encounter the ways we have strayed from God, the distractions that keep us from that which is elemental and essential to our lives. In many ways, the COVID-19 
pandemic has propelled us into a year-long examination. We grieve the loss of normal. We are angry at the unsettling of this struggle. It is hard for us. It's hard to feel God in this time. We are experiencing collective grief, collective sorrow, and yet God is with us in the darkness. As a people of faith, we must be willing to enter into these places of discomfort in order to speak the truth in love, to listen for learning and greater understanding, to advocate for those who cannot or do not for fear of their own safety, to push back and explain why certain behaviors can no longer be tolerated. These are his words, and I share this because this is something we share as a people called to ministry in all the world, as children of God. While it is true that we are often detached from these events because they are not happening before our eyes, they still matter in our efforts to examine ourselves before God and attempt to move forward in a love that is both a sign of affection and an action. I would like to invite you, I would invite us into a moment of silence to recognize the harm, but I feel it is inadequate at this time. While I do believe in the power of reclaiming the silence for our voices to meet God and for God to meet us, I'm just going to say that for this ministry moment, I want to invite you in another prayer as we reflect on what this stampede of violence means for us and the ministry we want to continue here at Prescott Valley United Methodist Church. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, in the midst of violence, we reach out to you for guidance. We hear the cries, we hear the shouts of why, and we don't feel like we can touch any of it ourselves, which is why we come to you for guidance. We long for you to teach us something from these dark mo moments, these dark circumstances, so that we can practice what we learn in our lives. As violence persists before us, Fit us for these moments with your armor, with truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and trust in your saving work. Allow us to enter our reflections with an unafraid witness to your love so that others may see that witness and feel empowered to do so as well. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who continues to break down walls for your love to be known. Amen. Thank you. Let us now continue our time with a reflection upon scripture. Today's scripture reading comes from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34 in the New Revised Standard Version. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Would you join me in response? 
for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Most glorious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you truly are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As we began our service this morning, I realized that I wanted to shift the trajectory of our reflections this morning. Um, I have written a sermon, but I wanted to offer just a reflection upon my own experience before I go into the details about our scripture this morning. I uh, have shared med with many of you that I didn't really attend a church actively until I was about 13. And that church that I started attending on a very regular basis was First United Methodist Church of Tempe. However, I always just refer to it as Tempe First <laughs> uh, when we re refer to the church that um, is my home church. I started attending when I was 13 and I was baptized when I was 15. And as I was baptized, I had this whole idea in my head that I'm going to be walking to this altar, kneeling on the alt by the altar rail and be baptized and confirmed to be a full member in the United Methodist Church in Christ's Holy Church. And I'm like, you know what? I'm ready. I got this. This is what I'm meant to do. And I'm going to change the world. <laughs> um, I was 15. Um, and I must say I was very, very aspirational, uh, but I definitely had a sense that this was something important and that I had a very significant hand to play when entering the church. And while that is true, I have also spent a lot of my time in my journey toward ministry realizing that I had very little to do with it. <laughs> I had very little to do with this entire process and this entire journey of faith. And now that we come to the close of our Lenten season, I realized this as I was sitting here reading through the book of Jeremiah. So we come to uh, a close of our Lenten season with a promise made by God in the book of Jeremiah. God speaks of the days that are coming and the new covenant, right? Uh, and the law that will be put within people and written upon hearts. Now, this passage can easily be associated with Jesus's coming, but I want to lay out all the cards on our table uh, before I continue and explain the situation we hear from in Jeremiah right now. At the time these words were said to have been spoken, the people of God were exiled. They were exiled. They were torn from their homes to live in foreign lands. And this prophet, Jeremiah, was called to speak to the people on behalf of God. This is a really tough situation for the people. And Jeremiah carried uh, such a heavy burden that he is even referred to as the weeping prophet. Have you heard that? He was referred to as the weeping prophet. You see, Jeremiah was not only with the people in their exile. He was actually called to tell the people that it was going to happen before it actually happened. He was tasked with warning them and then was led to continue speaking on behalf of God to a hurting people in exile. These people I am referring to are the Israelites. Uh, but as sometimes, as we sometimes read in any of the prophets, there are those nuggets of hope sprinkled uh, throughout the tales of woe and warnings for a people who were easily swayed by their surroundings. We read a nugget of hope in today's passage. The days are coming, is what the Lord had said. 
The days are coming when a new covenant will be made and the people will know God so intimately, so intimately, that the law will be within them. It will be written upon hearts. This is where I want us to focus on today. Not to exclude all of the other great messages that can come from this specific passage, but I want us to focus on the connection placed within people and the fact that it is written on hearts. That this becomes their hope in the darkness, the work of God. Some scholars assume that this has definitely not happened yet. They believe that, they, that we will wait for a day when a new covenant will be formed in such a powerful way that there will be no questions, like no questions about faith because everything is living within us like a map. We will never have to worry about losing or having it malfunction like a part of technology. Other scholars talk about the matter of a law written upon hearts through the lens of the marks of faith left upon us, the people, through the work of Jesus Christ, who bore such painful marks for us to even have a shot at salvation, for us to even have a shot at salvation. Now, I want to take this idea of being bar marked by Christ and add the perspectives that highlight the journey of embracing God's grace that surrounds us before we even know it, justifies us when we grow a little closer, and empowers us to move forward with an awareness of God working within us and through us. And yes, for those of you who may know, I am referring to the powerful process of grace that is rooted in our Wesleyan tradition. We think of God's law written on hearts in this way, through the lens of grace, through the lens of grace. This is touched on in our passage today. You see, the grace is that God is with us, that God does not reject that God knows and God gives us chances in the most bleakest of circumstances. And as much as we want to take ownership of that, it is God. While God does not enable complacency, God also does not ignore the cries of those who desperately need a chance. This is where we see God reaching out first. God reaching out first. While we can name all of the ways that we actively meet God, maybe you're in like me, 15 year old, I'm going to change the world. This is my effort. I'm going to do this. But we must not forget that God's love touches us first. God's love touches us first. It makes me think of the words that someone once told me. They said, No one wakes up and just says, Hey, I'm going to give my life to Jesus today. As if it were their idea to do so in the first place. As if God wasn't already offering the gift. In sharing this today, I want to set a reminder in our minds and prepare us for what we are about to celebrate. I have mentioned this before, but the season of Lent often mirrors our walk to the altar of faith, where we accept vows and or reaffirm God's saving work for us all. Or at the very least, we step closer to God through our time of self-examination and reflection. On the first Sunday of Lent, I even mentioned how Lent is a season of 40 days that reflects or often represents the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness, enduring temptation and preparing to begin his ministry. We recognize this time as a period of repentance, fasting, and preparation for the coming of Easter. It is a time of self-examination and reflection, but in the early church, Lent was a time to prepare new converts for baptism. And today, Christians focus on our or their our relationship with God, often choosing to give something up or to volunteer to give of themselves for others in some way, shape, or form. This is what we are taught about Lent. In all of this, 
we reacclimate ourselves to what it means to be not only a family member in the church, the body of Christ, but also as someone who is deeply, as people who are deeply loved, who are a deeply loved creation of God. God wants us here. But with this also comes a responsibility. We have a responsibility to God's grace in our lives, not an obligation, a responsibility. A responsibility, the responsibility is for us to be willing to embrace grace enough to change our hearts. Not by our own effort, but by God working through us. To say, I am responsible for my faith. You are responsible for your faith. We are responsible for our faith. How we move forward in God will continue to be our responsibility, knowing that God wants us here. That is what is written on our hearts. That is God's grace for us. That through all of the ugliness of this world, that through all of the brightest of moments, God wants us here in relationship, not only with God, but with each other. Wants to be known, right? That's why this passage says, when it's written on your hearts, no one will have to say, no God, because they already will know God whether we have already experienced that, or if we embrace this new covenant as something that is untouchable as of yet, or if it's something so deeply embedded within us, that is what's written on our hearts, the love of God, of knowing God, embracing that grace. And I pray that as we move out of this Lenten season, we may be able to do that. We may be able to rejoice in not only the path that Jesus Christ took, but the path that the Holy Spirit takes in our lives today because we are part of that journey very much so i would now like us to continue our reflections with our message in music would you join with me this moment sign and space take my friends around here 
us now join together in a time where we offer our joys, our concerns, our prayers, and our petitions into this space. You are invited to do so with the direction upon the screen. Let us join together in a preparation for prayer. Okay. I'm just going to outline a bit of what we'll be doing during this time, um, just in case you are joining us for the first time. Uh, this is the time where we offer our prayers into the space. Uh, I will begin with offering the prayers that were shared with me earlier this week, and then I will move on to the prayer requests that might be uh, offered through the chat sections on Zoom and then onto Facebook. Uh, and before I even offer the ones that um, were shared for me earlier during the week, I will check to see if there are any verbal requests offered through Zoom video. Uh, after each response, I mean, after each prayer request, every petition and every praise, I will invite you into response. The response will be, uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And you are welcome to join me at any point during that response. Uh, that being said, I'm going to move in to see if there are any verbal prayer requests that we'd like to share uh, prior to my sharing the requests that were shared with me earlier this week. I'm going to zoom through the Zoom. <laughs> if you have your video on, just raise your hand. And if you have your video off, please just type into the chat section. I'd like to speak or speak or uh, just give me a sign that you'd like to speak. I do have to ask to unmute you if you'd like to share. Okay, 
Looks like I see no hands, no comments. I'm going to begin with the prayer requests that were shared with me earlier this week. There are a few, and also there are a couple of, of joys that were shared uh, prior to our service starting. And I wanna make sure that I have those available before me, before I continue forward. Okay. Um, the first prayers requests are offered by Anita W. and I'm sure Med W. as well, uh, and I'm going to be offering them separately. There are two requests. The first uh, prayer request offered by An Anita uh, is that she will be having surgery scheduled for this thir Thursday, so prayers are requested for a successful surgery and that there will be no problems. Um, and let us lift this before God, praying for Anita, offering this as we respond, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. The next prayer request uh, that has been offered by Anita and Med W is for Anita's cousin, Claudia N and her family. Claudia's husband, Steve passed away in February. Prayers are requested for comfort and peace during this time. Let us offer this before God in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also have a prayer request um, offered by Cindy G. Uh, her brother, Ron, is currently in the ICU uh, after having severe side effects with his current treatment. We have been praying for Ron diligently for the past months, uh, and I'm going to invite you to pray for him in specific uh, specificity. I can't even speak. Uh, pray for him specifically uh, in these days to come as he has continued um, treatment in the ICU, as well as for Cindy, who is with him, uh, and Cindy's family, including Larry, who is with us this morning. Let us hold them all in our prayers as we lift this before God in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, with that, I do have one joy that was offered by Larry G uh, for Cindy's mother, Reba, who celebrated her 92nd birthday yesterday, or as uh, Stephen liked to put it this morning, 29th birthday. Uh, if you just flip the numbers, you know, it's the same thing. Um, what a joy it is that she could celebrate that uh, birthday, as well as that um, Cindy was able to spend that day with her, as well as with her brother, Ron. Uh, let us lift up this joy before God in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, I do have a prayer request that has no specific uh, prayer uh, attached to it other than um, just inviting you to keep Cheryl and Woody W in your prayers in these days to come. Um, the specific nature of this prayer will be for God to know. Um, and I just want to invite you to pray for Cheryl and Woody in these days to come, knowing that God knows what those prayers are for. Let us lift this before God in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I do have a joy and I couldn't find where I've written it. Fortunately, I do remember it. Um, there is a joy that was offered prior to our service this, this morning um, because Norma and Vern were able to have some extra help, I believe this past week uh, with their stove that was not working, right? Uh, I, did, I wrote it, okay, good. <laughs> I wrote it down because I was so worried I would forget it, and um, that's why I'm a little hesitant with offering this joy, but I wanted to offer it because they shared it as a Good Samaritan effort uh, for, from Larry and Pat, which is such a joy for us to share that, that our church family can come together in support of one another in that way. And I definitely wanted to lift this before God. So I'm going to invite you to do just that with me in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay, I believe that was all that I had written and shared with me just prior to the service. Uh, if I've forgotten something, I was writing on everything this morning. <laughs> Um, I want to invite us now to uh, 
join in reflection upon the prayer requests that were shared through the Zoom chat. However, I will check one last time to see if there's any verbal prayers, uh, praises, petitions that you'd like to offer into this space. Okie dokie. Let us move on to the prayers that are shared in our chat. It looks like we have one. Um, this is offered by, I believe, Sharon and Mike P, but I could be wrong. Um, but I'm going to read it as it's written. It says, prayers for the family of Peter M. He and his daughter attended services a number of times. Peter, Peter was a World, World War II vet who spent 13 wait, 1,368 days in a Japanese uh, prisoner of war camp, truly a part of the greatest generations. Peter passed on March 15th. Yes, let us pray for the family, Peter M. I do remember him. Um, and, I, and I'm almost positive this is offered by Mike now. Uh, he was the one who introduced me to Peter. He said, you have to come meet this person. Uh, and I do remember him and his daughter and our services. And I'm so glad that you brought up this prayer that we can lift this before God and continue to hold Peter in our prayers, knowing that he is in the nearer presence of God. Let us lift this before God in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh, I have an update on that as well from Marcia C. Uh, she said that Peter said he wanted to live at 100 to, oh, to 100. He celebrated his 100th birthday a few weeks ago at an airfield with his family and friends. Yes, thank you for sharing that, Martha. Marsha, sorry, Marsha. <laughs> I'm glad that we could add that to our prayer. We did lift it before God in response, so I will be continuing uh, with the other prayer requests that were shared through Facebook now. Um, I wanted to offer this as an extended joy. Uh, this is from Pat M, who helped with Norma and Vern's stove. Uh, Pat says, Vern and Norma failed to mention that they also provided a sumptuous meal for the little help we provided. <laughs> What a joy that is. This is a this is a, a separate joy. Let's let's lift this before God in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for all your prayers. I don't know if I, I've shared this with you, but this is a joy for me, being able to meet with all of you in this way, to connect in this way by lifting our prayers before God, by joining together. Um, this is definitely why I close the service with this time that we can end with, with our community in mind, not only our community, but the prayers that we share with the world. Uh, that being said, if there are no other prayer requests, petitions, praises, thanks, I'm going to invite us to join together in prayer. Would you pray with me? <sighs> Glorious God, we cannot even begin to name how grateful we are for your grace that draws us in and sends us out. It is by your grace that we are given an opportunity to create a life with you and each other. In our pains and in our joys, we are able to rejoice in the fact that we are not alone not only because your presence lives around us, in us, and through us, but also because we see that in the faces, in the prayers, and in the actions of our church family and in creation that you empower to live into the goodness you created us to be. We come to you now 
in pursuit of your mighty presence that moves mountains and changes hearts, your presence that empowers a walk in righteousness and comforts the brokenhearted. We pray for all of the prayers shared in this space and the ones spoken and the ones that lay on our minds and hearts directed to you both in joy and in heartache. We come to you, great God, for in all of our circumstances, we long to experience the fullness of who you are and the fullness of who you create us to be as a people bounded in love. We pray that you turn our eyes to you more vividly that we might be able to see your face more vividly. Whether we are experiencing great heartaches right now or the greatest of joys, we long for you to be in our foresight and not behind us or on the back burner of the lives we lead. We pray you can transform us to see where you meet us, providing us with comfort, strength, healing, and much more on this journey we walk together. We come to you in prayer, praying, this all in the name of this, in the name of your son Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen, amen, amen. And with this, I'm going to leave you with a benediction just prior to sharing the song of farewell. Uh, but I'm going to say before we do that, that we will be closing right after the song of farewell. I will end the live stream and then wave at the folks on Zoom and then end the Zoom meeting. Uh, that will be how we move forward and close our time together. That being said, I really truly, truly, truly pray that the love of God that became manifest in, Ju in Jesus Christ continues to live and breathe among all of you through the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit today and all all days. And with that, this is my blessing. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our song of farewell, which is turn your eyes to Jesus. I believe that's the name. I feel as if I misspoke it, but let us join together in song. <laughs>